TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick.com. We are not live right now, though, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we do go live and you happen to miss the live, and you just want highlights, they'll be on this channel right here. We do got merch, don't forget that. You get me. And we also got the Patreon. Everything you can't watch on here, you watch it on Patreon. We watch a lot of kick exclusives too, man. Faulty Towers, we watching that. Morning of Life. You know, we getting it over there too. This is what I'm here for. I done got my food. I almost made some tea. Get my Kermit the Frog on. BBC Scandal. Presenter accused of starting chat with 17-year-old using love hearts and kisses. Chat where? Ain't the age of consent 16 in the UK? Okay. I'm just, I'm trying to figure it out. What's going on? Why is this a scandal? What made it a scandal? That's the, go that's the law that y'all put out there. 17, okay. TV's Oliver Whitfield Miocic is covering this story for us. Joins us now from outside the BBC's headquarters, new broadcasting house. Ollie, uh, so much to catch our audience up on. Talk us through the latest. Well, the BBC is this evening facing new bombshell allegations being reported by the Sun newspaper, which says there are now two new accusers. The Sun. Accusers. <laughs> who have come forward. The newspaper Ooh. says that the BBC presenter broke lockdown rules to meet a third younger person in 2021 in February. At that time, the country was in lockdown. Travel was banned Ooh. from various parts of the country to one another, unless for work purposes, that lockdown not being lifted until a month later. The presenter allegedly messaged the 23-year-old over a three-month period and is alleged to have sent £650 in total. He asked for pictures in return. He was That's a 23-year-old. Who, who, why, do, why do we care, though? It happened during lockdown. The prime minister was out and about partying. He sent a picture of a semi-naked person. Now, in the course of the messages which went on over that three-month period and after the meeting had concluded, the presenter allegedly said, I didn't want to leave either. I really liked your company. Next time, I'll stay longer. This third younger person is accusing the BBC star of showing arrogance and of sending selfies whilst he was in the building behind me in the studio during work hours. Now, in another story, which is going to be published in the Sun's... How, yo, how old were all of these people? Because younger person, like, it implies that he's doing something illegal. Newspaper tomorrow. 23? I heard 23 and I heard 17, which is not illegal. Oh, the in the UK. Newspaper has spoken to a fourth younger person, this time a 17-year-old who was contacted Two on Instagram back in 2018, back completely in the blue, out of the blue, I should say. At the time, the pupil was still at school. There is no insinuation that anything illegal has happened, but we are reporting this to show the pattern of communication from the BBC presenter to multiple people, either via do we know who the presenter is, or on social media. These messages relating to this fourth person said to contain love hearts and kisses in them. Oliver, thank you very much for bringing that. To get to love hearts and kisses, there has to be a conversation being had, a back and forth. If I man. So far, I'm a min two, three, two and a half minutes in. I don't see what the issue is. I'm not even being weird. Like no funny, no funny games. I don't see what the issue is. These are women of age. They're 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 they're, they're above the age of consent in the UK. 
Me personally, that's too young. You got to be like at least 20, 21. But, okay. At latest, we'll be keeping you there just in case other news breaks and coming back to you when we need to. Ollie has been out there all day for us. Right, let's bring in Tuesday night's first edition panel for their reaction to these late. Is he married or something? Just revelations with me tonight, Labour MP for Birmingham Yardley, Jess Phillips, and the Conservative MP. She looked like she about to go tell your manager. Look at her. Latest revelations with me tonight, Labour MP for Birmingham. <laughs> Can I speak to the manager? Birmingham Yardley, Jess <laughs> Phillips, bad. and the Conservative MP for Rossendale and Darwin, and former party chairman, Jake Berry. Uh, look, both of you um, were reacting to that. Okay, break it down, y'all. Through the latest. It's hard not to, and I think at this point yesterday, uh, I don't see what we the problem felt is. felt slightly differently about this, but as these revelations continue to mount, it just feels like it's going in a certain direction, Jess. Yeah, it does, it does it. seem that that is the case. And, and of course, these things have to be completely uh, independently uh, investigated. But right. it, yeah, it, do, it doesn't sound good. And it feels to me as if it is. It, it, Listen, to me, the 23 year old, whoever that woman is, she knew she hit a lick. She knew she hit a lick. Oh, yeah, come on over. That's chill. Let me bleed you, though. Send me $650. i am going to get my money up out of this. Hey. And dude went along with it. He knew what it was. What's the... Okay. It's spoiling up into being a completely untenable situation. The fact that this person remains unnamed and the... I just... The Jeremy Fine saying he feels like they should come forward... The whole thing is just horrific and horrendous uh, to me and speaks of How? whether it's power or money or vulnerability or age of the people. Mm. I, it just feels so deeply, deeply uncomfortable to me. I mean, that is it, Jay, isn't it? Because, I mean, the police obviously still investigating that. Maybe I don't have the full, like, I don't have the full grasp of what's going on. I can't have it. Two 17 year olds, a 23 year old, and what was it? There was four they said? Whether there are criminal aspects to this or illegal aspects, up to that point, it's grubby, it's tawdry, it could just be someone's private life, but actually, it's a lot more complex. Than That's that. what it sounds like. Well, Someone's private life. As I see it. First of all, I agree absolutely with Jazz. It's completely untenable mm -hmm. that the BBC doesn't name this individual. I read today online that apparently one in six adult Britons already knows who this is because it's so widely I have no idea. shared on the internet. That, that seems to me completely untenable. And you can't help have a bit of a feeling that the BBC is sort of circling the wagons, completely vainly, by the way, in my view, around one of their own to try and protect them. It's not necessarily the approach they take when other people are accused of wrongdoing. And I think for lots of us, that brings back. I wouldn't be surprised if the BBC fabricated this themselves to get, in a, to get back into, to get back into like, in the tabloids. Hey, damn. We ain't got nothing going on at the BBC. Okay, we got to get back in the tabloids. Let's throw somebody in there who did something but not really did something so we can get back circulating. Um, a lot of the allegations and the behaviour that we saw from the BBC during the long period of abuse under Jimmy, Sh Jimmy Savile where there was a view. Now, yes, BBC do got a reputation of doing, covering up and protecting pet people. P, 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 that P word. But is that the case right now? Because 23, 17, 17, and I don't know the age of the other one. That the BBC hadn't dealt with that correctly. That's the first thing. It's about the individual. The second thing is how has the BBC dealt with these allegations themselves correctly? And we're learning now that family members of the first alleged victim contacted the BBC, and it was in the opening of the show, seven weeks before any action was taken. It's reported in tomorrow's papers that, um, you know, family members didn't even, you know, get a message from the BBC. They, they just got a mm. one email. And so the two big questions are, for the individual, is it tenable for him not to be named? Absolutely not, in my view. And then secondly, for the BBC, we're going to have a long, hard look at how our state broadcaster has behaved no, no, that's true. Family members and members of the public who have genuine. That's true. The BBC has to take some accountability, get in front of these things because they have a bogus history. You know what I'm saying? They're going to continue to keep having that bogus history 
But you know why they had that history and they protect? Because who else is doing it over there that's higher up? And apparently, if these allegations are true, well-founded concerns Allegedly. about one of the, the stars from that channel. Listen, we're going to continue this uh, conversation going. It's a fast-moving story. Let's remind ourselves the how star of today's that events unfolded. Head back over to Oliver Whitfield Mietrich, standing outside. Ollie, uh, uh, just remind us a little bit of uh, how it unfolded today, because the BBC actually began sort of reporting on itself. You may have tried dropshipping in the past, so and you might have started. They created the news, reported it on themselves, like. Come on, Oliver, give me some information that I, that I may have missed. Yes, and the BBC, I think, started off the day in quite a happy place. Clearly, there is no happy place with this story. But after the developments that had happened on Monday, where BBC News had spoken to the lawyer of the first younger person, there did seem to be question marks over the stories that were being reported by the sun the bbc then held a briefing for its annual report but okay how old was the first person instead of being able to shout about its impressive new sales figures the thing that was dominating was this scandal which is now engulfing the bbc that briefing totally not allowed to engulfing the bbc is crazy my bad we gotta be professional my bad be recorded by either bbc that briefing totally not allowed to be recorded by either of the main broadcasters or us here at Talk TV. We were only allowed to take down notes from what Tim Davey had said. We heard of a new timeline where the complaints had come in on two separate occasions, one via an in-person, in-BBC attempt. Another was when the complainants were in touch this, with the BBC audience line. But we were told that no further action could be taken because the attempts to get back in touch with the people had failed. Also told that there was no contact with the presenter for that almost seven weeks. So there were big questions after that, big questions that we'd put to the BBC in writing, asking for clarification. We got no responses to them. Big questions about what the differences were. Nah, hold on, bro. Who is the presenters on BBC? Images, images. Mm -hmm. So one of these, okay. Is it this guy, Jeremy? Oh no, he urges the unnamed star to come forward. Well, all we can do is wait at this point, right? In the complaints, com questions about why it took so long to get in touch with the presenter. Why the only two attempts have been made to get in touch with the complainant. Now, on that question of who spoke to the presenter, Tim Davey, when he was interviewed by a BBC outlet earlier on, had this to say. I'm not going to get into the uh, specific conversations with the presenter. Have you spoken to him? Personally, no. He's been spoken to by a senior manager. Has he offered to resign? Again, that is a matter that I think we have to respect the privacy of an employee. No, we don't. Now let's... No, we don't. It's a public figure. He's in the public eye. And right now, you're facing a lot of scrutiny for whoever this guy is. So we don't got to respect his privacy. No, we don't. We're nosy. We are human. We are nosy. So, no, we don't. <laughs> Take a look at that timeline, which was revealed by the BBC today. Okay, hold on, on May hold on. the 19th, the BBC... Okay, May 19th. Let me get in the corner. Let me get smaller. That's as small as I can get. Pause. BBC's corporate investigations team assessed the information that was contained in, in the complaint provided from audience services. 
The assessment made was that on the basis of the information provided, it didn't include an allegation of criminality, but nonetheless merited further investigation. The BBC sent an email to the complainant. Fast forward to June, and having received no response to the email, a phone call was made by BBC investigators to the mobile number provided, but the call did not connect. Following these attempts to make contact with the complainant, the corporate investigations team were due to return to the matter in the coming weeks, but no well, additional attempts to contact the complainant were made after that. What did they want BBC to do, though? They, they emailed and they called the number that they gave. No answer, no, no, no response. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like me, if I email somebody something or if I'm complaining about something and it's that big of a deal to me, I'm going to be paying attention to when those responses are coming back. You feel me? At date, even if the case remained open throughout. Fast forward a month to July the 6th, the Sun newspaper informing the BBC via the corporate press office of allegations concerning this BBC presenter. The BBC called and informed its executives, including the director general, and brought them in to formulate some sort of plan to deal with the crisis. On July the 7th, the BBC makes contact with the police. Two days later, on July the 9th, the BBC suspends the presenter. And then on July the 11th, today, the BBC revealing that there had been new claims from a second person. Now, in this instance, the second person has claimed that they were contacted on a dating website. That and I, like that's that's that the second person sounds. Oh, now, yo, this is for clout at this point. The second person, in my opinion, whoever's being contacted on a dating site, you're on the dating site. I was on a dating site. I contacted you. Yes, I'm a public figure. But hey. We went back and forth, whatever. I don't know if whoever this presenter is is married or what, but the second person that notified them, it sounds real cloudy. Like, I want some clout. The first person, though, it sounds like there were some real concerns from their parents or something. The first person got to be like 6, 17. That conversation, then moving to social media websites here at Talk TV, we believe that included Instagram and Twitter. The person who has then had then said that he might online identify who the BBC presenter was. The BBC presenter, upon finding this out, getting back in touch with vitriolic messages, something which left the person feeling scared and worried. So there is been no comment from the BBC about this second younger person. The story has moved so drastically in the space of 48 hours. The BBC now faces a huge conundrum of what to do. The presenter at the very centre of... They don't face a huge conundrum. I'm tired of hearing that. The BBC has a whole legal team behind them. They're not me and you who don't have no... Who don't have no... Guidance have no lawyers though. They have a whole litigation lawyer team Solicitors behind them that can tell them how to navigate this. They know exactly how to do they they, 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 they not they're just not <laughs> Or they're not telling us what they do of this scandal it Also faces questions about what should happen should that person identify themselves What is the next course of action in this? Now, there are also big questions about who has paid for the legal fees for the first young person. Today again, Tim Davey questioned on that very subject. Do you know categorically that the presenter would, did not pay for those legal fees? Because that's the suggestion being made by the family. That is not information that I'm party to. So you can't even say that that's... No. That's not, I, I think that's not something for the BBC, bluntly. No ads. Freedom of speech. The BBC trying to remove themselves from it, low key, but so this is a this is a big presenter on y'all channel. You can't move them away. You can't take yourself away unless you remove yourself fully. 
So here we are. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Potentially even more allegations. That's certainly what the fourth person who has spoken to The Sun says is the reason he has spoken to the newspaper in a bid so that any... The fourth person who was... Did he just say the fourth person was a he? Sun says is the reason allegations. That's certainly what the fourth person who has spoken to The Sun says is the reason he has spoken to the newspaper in a bid so that any other younger people who've potentially been contacted by this BBC presenter feel that they can speak out. So this BBC... Oh, okay. So this BBC presenter is going for he's and she's? <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. But that's a new little loophole in it that I didn't notice. It's tough. Out as well. Ollie, thanks so much. More great reporting there outside New Broadcasting House for us. Let's return to the studio now. Jay Barry still in here with me, plus we're also joined by former culture minister and conservative peer, Lord Ed Vasey, former culture minister. That's uh, useful for us this evening, of course, Ed, to, to talk about this and the BBC's hand. He has a hair transplant. Um, if this was a normal person, Doing this, it wouldn't even matter. Link of all of this, we heard from Tim Daly. I need to know the um, real ages. 17, 17, and 23. The way the BBC have gone about this today. Some are saying the journalists within the organisation reporting without fear or favour on their colleagues. Um, but there were allegations that they didn't lead on this story. You know, it was papers that broke it. What do you make of the BBC's handling of it all? Uh, well, it's a complicated mess, and as your reporter said, it's a story that's changing. I feel like the only person that the only vic the only person that has a leg to stand on is the first person that brought it to their attention. The first person that came up brought it to their attention. And then everybody else fell in line on some. The twenty-three year old, we could just take her out the mix. She was getting what she was getting out of there. She was making the best out of the situation. She knew what she was doing. Uh, almost by the minute. Hour That's a grown hour. woman. It's a, I think the BBC, I mean, I'm a defender of the BBC, and I think the BBC finds itself in a difficult position because uh, none of these allegations have yet been proved. They're quite serious, but nobody knows if the criminal law has been broken. But it is interesting that the BBC okay. broke the story of these kind of second set of messages, the second... Uh, encounter, if you like, and the BBC is quite good at reporting on itself. Mm. It often holds its leadership to account. Some people think it goes too far. I've seen people tweeting, for example, when they're watching the BBC World News tonight, when you've got things like Ukraine going on and the NATO summit, mm. the World News, which is watched all around the world in hotel rooms all around the world. You know, we're all used to turning on and seeing our. I, 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 whoever this guy is, I, I, I'm on the same page as you. I don't feel like this is. BBC News, 23 minutes on a BBC presenter scandal seems a bit over the top, so sometimes the BBC can be a bit uh, self-flagellating. But it's a, it's a very difficult situation they find themselves in. Fundamentally, what this will come down to is what Jake was talking about earlier, which is, you know, it's reported in May, it's breaking big in uh, June, mm. what, what is the, in July, July, what is the gap, the seven-week gap? Oh. Why was the investigation not pursued more vigorously? I mean, Jake, you, you had a reaction to Tim Davies' words there. Yeah, I mean, look, well, so first of all, let's pay tribute to the Sun newspaper, which has broken this story. The question I, tribute. <laughs> I would ask is, if they hadn't, what would have happened to these reports? Would it have just sort of been some internal process that seemed, if you look at that timeline you just had on, there seems to be like a break for a few weeks while they sort of thought about this. Well, how long? I feel like I'm missing something. I have to be missing something, a crucial part of the story. Why is this such a big deal? That's what I want to know. For the first person that came to, to, to the top, to, came and brought it to everybody's attention, okay. That's a big deal. But the rest, I feel like they was grown up. They, they 17, 23, and a young person who is of age and consent, like, hmm? What that would have gone on for if the Sun hadn't 
sort of, and the parents of the first alleged victim haven't been brave enough to contact the newspaper. See, that's what I mean. Like, the parents came up. It was like, hell no, nah, my daughter's 17, she's still too young. And this old guy, this middle-aged, this grown man, who's going through a crisis, whoever he is, is you know what I'm saying? And then, and then also, I just thought it was an extraordinary comment by the Director General to say, you know, it's not for the BBC to sort of concern itself with whether someone has paid an alleged victim's legal fees. It's absolutely fundamental to this case because... It is. I agree. I thought it was weird when he said it too. One of the, the sort of fundamental allegations that was first broken by the Sun newspaper was that the alleged victim was vulnerable. They had issues around a chaotic lifestyle and addiction. And then they're, they're particularly vulnerable to sort of powerful individuals who get power over them if the, if the reports are true. Obviously, nothing is yet proven. And I would have thought the Director General of the BBC would understand that this is, ap that is an absolutely fundamental point. I would argue that any middle class, middle to lower class family, in the UK is vulnerable. Everybody. Because of the housing crisis, because of the food prices, everything is spiking. Everybody needs some money. To their investigation mm -hmm. about whether this is may not be illegal, but exploitative. And the fact that he just sort of dismisses it, I think, you know, I find that very, very concerning about their attitude. And look, whether, again, the Met Police still investigating whether it was officially criminal activity involved here, obviously the ages of the people involved are being investigated, etc. Um, but the... So if the Met Police are still investigating whether it was criminal, then everybody is age of consent. Now, what it comes down to, like with the first person, yo, my parents is not jocking this. We're not, they're not going. So let me let me let me go bring it up to them. Let me blow, blow the whistle. Let me make light of it. That twenty three year old bro got six fifty. Whoever the twenty three year olds got paid six fifty, probably got free flights. Got all all type of stuff about of the deal. The sort of the tawdry grubby end. They didn't met up, kicked it like nah. bit, the private life thing. It begs this question: How much? Uh, broadcasters, presenters, people in the public, our politicians, as you both are, have been, etc., continue to be peers, are allowed to go about and have a private life, the right to privacy, but you do make a sort of forced impact when you become a broadcaster and you sign contracts, I have with many different broadcasting networks, that you represent the organisation yeah. online, in social media, and when you're out and about as well. Let me tell you something. People like this, people like who have influence people who got big money people like it's gonna sound bad when i say this but it's the truth they cannot reach down and mess with people who who are not at that same level because it's always gonna look bad they can always have one leg up on you they can always uh blackmail you they can always do something goofy it's gonna always never look good for you that's why you rich you be rich be in the limelight. Have a social life, but like do what other rich people do. I'm not gonna say what other rich people do, cause you know what I'm saying. You gotta you you, you rich for a reason. Use your money. <laughs> what the hell? Keep it quiet. Keep it hush. Do like the rappers do. Well, and yes, it does. That might be a bad example. Uh, just you know, you gotta move more cautiously impact your your private life but that's sort of part of the deal right ed uh, yeah, it is part of the deal. I mean, I think everyone is entitled, obviously, to a private life. The reason that this is broken as a story, and uh, Jake is quite right, I think, to say that the Sun has broken this story. And if they, you know, that is the good kind of factual, the kind of what if, if the Sun had not broken mm. the story, uh, and the BBC had carried on with this, well, we tried to investigate it, but the parents wouldn't um, call back. Would we be in the position here? And there will be lessons to be learned from the BBC, just as there was for. ITV with the Philip Schofield uh, issue, but uh, people are entitled to a private life and the law says you're entitled to a private life. Uh, the key here and the reason there's a public interest element is it's always about uh, people in positions of power, mm. people who are significantly older than the people, whether you call them victims or... That's not a surprise to me though. 
old men been messing with young women for like young consenting age of consent women for a long time. That's a thing. You know what I'm saying? That's a thing, and you know what I'm saying? Sugar baby, sugar like that's sugar that like that's a real thing. That's not that's not surprising to me. The surprising, the most surprising that I have is that whoever this break this this presenter is had this crazy lapse of judgment. Like that's a wild lapse of judgment, bro. You gotta go. <laughs> Just go find you a sugar baby or something. Who gonna keep it low key? Who gonna do play her role? And exactly like, but this right here, you 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 on front page now, buddy. It's over. Or uh, people who are being exploited or vulnerable, uh, who are who are engaged on the other side of this relationship. That's why there is to a, an, an element of a public interest in this. With Philip Schofield, for example, it was a kind of workplace issue. Mm. Did he exploit his power? I'm not gonna comment in detail on it, but you know, that was the argument. Did he exploit his power with a younger member of his team? And here, it's whether an older man is using his power to exploit others. But it's not just that. Rich old people. Who are not famous do it all the time. Yeah, I got money. I'm saying no, that's that's not uncommon. It's damn near fake news. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. Except the first the first young lady and her parents that came forth. Besides that, that's the only real portion of it. The rest of it is like, what are we doing? It's actually. The other thing that's been reported about this this evening is the alleged breach of lockdown and right. for people working in the BBC. That lockdown was three years ago. Who gives who? This organisation was fundamental, mm. actually, to passing on the messages from the government saying, look, you know, you, you, we all have to abide by lockdown. We're going to play our part. You know, stay home, keep keep people safe, and. Um, you know, and that, that, is, that is an important public interest part of this story. If effectively the organization, which is largely responsible for telling us about lockdown, mm. uh, had people working within it who were. Uh, well, it has echoes it. of the Johnson well, up government. Well, to a point. I mean, yeah. I, I think I would slightly part company with Jake on this one because I think uh, using the lockdown angle is, a, is slightly clutching at straws to keep the story going. I mean, there, there's an element. The, the point about this is, is, is the first story, which is, you know, what was this kid underage in terms of exchanging photos under the age of 18 and was somebody you see now see now this is where you confuse people underage in underage terms of exchanging photos under the age of 18 under the age of i thought it was 16. now is that a law what is that what is that about if the age of consent is 16 Then at 17, are you able to do, like, send selfies to each other? I'm, I'm lost. I'm so lost about this. The, the whole age of consent in the UK thing is just still wild to me. If it was 21, I mean, my bad. If it was really, if it was 18, 18, like, solid for real, then, like, then it's a clear cut. There's a problem. But since it's 16, there's so many, like, now do you got to be 18 to send pictures back and forth? But 16, I can, you know what I'm saying? Do this and that and the dirt. Like, I don't know. I'm it's all weird to me, man. Like I said, hey, don't talk to me unless you're 21. <laughs> Was somebody Period. using their kind of power to exploit it? And I will never date you unless you're 26 and older. That's just me personally. At 26 and younger, you still got too much life to live. You you still out there doing your thing, and I ain't got time for it. <laughs> that has led to kind of further allegations from other people. Lockdown. I mean, I can't well, now. I, I can't mean, now no, remember no, what no, I can't sorry, remember. And, sorry, and, and, hold on, let me just finish my that. point. Yeah, I can't remember the points that are they married? Uh, uh, Jake made when Boris was being. I was hammered, about to say this. Hammered on lockdown. I defended, by the way. I defended Boris uh, over Partygate. And that's why I'm happy to defend. Well, look, I remember look. when the scientists' affair it was exposed during lockdown, and it was 
to a certain extent, I hate to say it like this, but it was a certain, it was a gift to the newspapers because you could basically then write <laughs> any story about anyone's private life because you could start well, he with, did has this person but broken because, because we, can't well, name, there's, we, there's, we can't know what the role this individual... And this guy, he doesn't have a wedding ring on his finger, so I don't, like, y'all sitting up here acting like y'all don't look at girls that are women that are, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, stop. I don't believe you, sir. You, sir, over here with the hair implant, I kind of give you a pass because you got a wedding ring, but you, you're you a single dude right here. You might have a girlfriend, but, like, come on, bro. ...or the wider BBC had in this... What was we, your we view on Boris and lockdown? Look, my view on Boris and lockdown is he absolutely made some mistakes, but it's ridiculous. I don't give a fuck. Um, my whole thing, man, like, when you get to a certain level in life... You can't, you can't, like, like rappers, they don't engage with groupies, right? Okay, they might have some, like, they might have well-known groupies, groupies that are always around other rappers who know, like, the, the, who know the code. But, like, fans, there it is, fans. You can't mingle with fans. Rappers don't mingle with fans. They don't take fans home because they're going to end up Taking pictures, they're gonna end up ex trying to do this to them, do that to them. It's a reason for that, and this is the same way. Now look at you, goofy. <laughs> TL, leave a like comment. Uh, somebody explain the full fledge of the situation to me, or drop a video link or something, because right as it stands right now, I'm a little lost. 